It doesn't look that big from here. Guys. You know Riley's gonna use the word massive, don't you? We're about to go on a massive gunboat. Gunboats are so cool, you guys. Guaranteed, if you're a sailor, you sick. have heard of gumbo. And Everyone in the world wants a gunboat. It's like the Gucci of the sea. Like Even monohull sailors. Everyone wants a gunboat. Yeah. It's just it's a fact. We are super Rapidos lucky. are faster for sure. We're super lucky and to cooler. get the opportunity to not only show you guys a full boat tour of one of these beautiful creatures, but take her for a spin. We're gonna get her sailing at full speed. Let's see how the wind what the wind is, yeah? We haven't even checked the weather. It feels windy. We're pretty lucky, we're very amped. And stick around because we've got one heck of an update for you all on our new trimaran. After a whirlwind sail on board Fujin last week, we're currently located on the east coast of the USA, specifically the Chesapeake Bay. As you guys know, we're on a world tour at the moment, showing you guys some of the most unique vessels that there are out there on the water. So a little history on Vandal. Vandal here was built by a truly adventurous couple, Megan and Conrad, who, like Riley and I, had the dream of sailing the world. They thought the best way to learn to sail would be by building their boat. After many challenges, Vandal was conceived by renowned multi-hull designer Nigel Irons and delivered by builder Gunboat International. When Megan was seven months pregnant, she and Conrad went on their first voyage to the Bahamas for a month before their beautiful daughter Zelda was born. Like us vagabonds, they sailed with their family across the oceans, documenting their adventures and sharing them with the whole world, eventually deciding to move on to their next big adventure. This thing is massive. There is so much room in here. It feels like a, uh, what do you call those things? Open plan living, a loft. It feels like a big apartment. I'm immediately thinking of the sun's reflection though, like it is super exposed, but you do feel like you're really living on the ocean. It's not an enclosed space at all. This is like a platform with a roof. Immediately I love it, but we're about to explore the rest of the boat. As you guys know, Riley likes to do what's out on deck and I do down below, but I guess this is my area. I just considered this outside. And I've decided I'm gonna take on an alter ego. Her name is Saskia, who loves doing boat tours. Cause I'm still super uncomfortable with what? this idea really? of doing boat tours, I'm not a boat tour gal. Why Saskia? Saskia loves boat tours. Don't you reckon? So are you gonna like have a, a Russian accent or a, an Icelandic accent? I don't think I can pull that off very well. So I have not been down into the port side hull. Let's go have a look. Ooh la la, oh, washing machine. There's even a washing machine on yeah, a gunboat boot very here. Very good, very good. Damn. <laughs> I still haven't won the washing machine war that we're having for any trim Aircon round. here. Aircon? Yeah. No way. Yeah, man. Oh, and look oh. at the wall paint. Paper. See, wallpaper is cool in a boat. It's in. That's whisper wall, isn't That's it? Whisper wall paper. Cool, I didn't know that was a thing. Bit dusty, didn't do a good enough job of cleaning, Chris. <laughs> Come and look at the head. Hmm, nice. Nice, oh. There's nice wood in here, that's, feels pretty solid. Very spacious. If you were to be in there whilst this boat was sailing, you would be flying around, I can tell you that. <laughs> What's behind here? Ah, oh, ah, oh, whoa, okay. Storage. I like the beds that are up high. I kind of wish our Rapido, the bed was high as well. No good for Darwin. That is a steep fall for a kid, for sure. So the thing about boats is you're really trying to make the most out of every square inch of space. I like that they've made the steps to the bed a little cupboard down here. Yo, what's this? Well, more fridges. I think there's a <laughs> fridge in the galley. And the biggest freezers. This is an apartment sized fridge. Damn. There is a lot, a lot of storage under the floors as well. There's probably not even, cause no one lives on this full time right now. It's for sale by the way. Um, bloody goodbye if you ask me. We'll put more details in the description box below. But it's all pretty empty, waiting for an owner. Am I too pushy? <laughs> Hi, it's me, 
Saskia again. We're here in the galley. We did discover that there is indeed a big fridge in here. So they have lots of fridge space for those who are very hungry on passage. This is a four burner stove top and a microwave. Microwave, no oven on this boat. I'm seeing this more and more. Or does this work as an oven? It's I'm not good with this. It's a micro oven. My mum was scared of microwaves, so we never really got into the whole <laughs> microwave scene. But I mean, it looks like a microwave to me. I guess it's synthetic leather because these would not be able to get wet and they probably would get wet. That's comfy as f Yeah? No, that really is comfortable. It's got a bit of spring back. Oh! You know when they're too soft and then you sink into a hole and then you sweat yeah. in the Bahamas? Yeah, yuck. This is not like that. No sweat, eh? No, it's just it's springing back beautifully. I can imagine that. Uh, Good morning guys, I just escaped the kids and Riley today before our next sale and I wanted to take a second to thank today's sponsor which is AG1. My favourite way to start the day has been to either go for a run or a walk and drink AG1 on an empty stomach. You can really feel the energy boost, it sets me up for the day. Absolutely adore AG1, love all that they're doing. It's made in New Zealand. There are 75 vitamins and minerals in AG1 so it's your daily dose of everything. It's an all-in-one. It has pre and probiotics for your gut health and antioxidants, adaptogens. I really don't have to worry about carting around all the various supplements and remembering to take it all. This is such an easy habit to get into because you just mix one scoop with every eight ounces of water. I've actually got two in here and you shake it just with water. That's it. You don't have to mix it or disguise the flavor. The flavor is so nice. It's kind of like an apple or I always say like a pineapple in a way. Really nice. One every day and you know that you're covered. It actually bridges the gap in your daily nutrition. So look no further, if you're after a way to optimize your health, definitely get amongst AG1. All of my friends are drinking it, and today they're actually gonna give you five travel packs for free, as well as a whole year supply of their vitamin D3 and K2 with your first purchase. You can just click the link in the description box below, or head to the link I've got up on the screen here. Thanks guys. Oh, aircon. Yeah, aircon is nice. If you could have any boat in the world, would it be a gunboat? so hard it's like because it is kind of like having a gucci bag or like a prada bag you know they're so sought after and so well made and beautiful i want to say yes but i don't know yet i'll give you that answer once we've sailed on it because i want to see how hard it is to sail people would approach you in an anchorage a little bit different they would there's something about having a gumbo like it's very cool <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if we've said that yet <laughs> all right so is this for privacy? Because that's not very private. No, no, it's for <laughs> locking the kids in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is what we needed yeah. on our catamaran. A secure place to put the kids in fast. To just dump them. We had an idea to put car seats <laughs> in the saloon <laughs> and like strap them in. Love this. Great. And this is going to be the same as what's on the other side. like on our catamaran this is a catamaran as well and the escape hatches are just here under the companionway steps so if the boat was to flip you could get out here you can also see the fish in the morning <laughs> Lenny used to stick his head through here <laughs> every morning and be like pissies pissies <laughs> I see dolphins and dolphins really well. Now, before we jump into Riley's tour of this boat's exterior, we wanted to share with you guys a little update about our own exterior. We know you guys have been so curious to know what's been going on with La Vagabond the Third. So guys, we thought it was about time we gave you a trimaran update. It's been a while. I know you're excited about these other boats we're going aboard, but we haven't actually seen an update on our boat recently in the factory, and recently it's been painted. With so Axo Nobel. The Axo Nobel's paint, which we're super grateful for. We cannot wait to see it. This is actually the first time I will be seeing it. So Mark, could you yeah. tell us hey, some Mark. things? How are you going? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Hey, how's our boat going? Well, it's um, going really well. We've just about finished all the painting. We painted the main hull in the last week. Mm -hmm. um, we're down now. We've got left to paint the beams. 
Okay. So we've done the armors, we've done the non-skip, done the main hull and the deck. Are we doing them black or white or grey, the booms? They're white. I think they'll look a lot better white because it'll match in with the deck, which is white. Okay, I cool. I think you have too many other colours going on. How was the paint process for you guys and how did the paint go on? The whole process, it starts with, we had a visit from the cane, the technical manager of Axa Nobel and the, the other agent from Singapore, Fred and they gave us, before we started anything, they gave us some um, training and just advice on the best way to, to use the paint. Yeah. Uh, guys are, are painters, they've got good skills, but they haven't painted a, a boat that size before. It was a pretty big task for our guys, our workers to undertake. And he came a second time when we were actually spraying um, the armors, the top coat and the undercoat, which is the 545 primer. Um, so he was there and he actually picked up a gun and sprayed Half the armour himself as well with our guys, so I could say you know 100 percent for support from Action Noble. Awesome. That's yeah. great to hear. And and what does the colour look like? Is it super vibrant? Is it the mustardy vintage? Is it the vintage wanted? mustard? It's a, it's a little bit nicer than that, I think. Ooh. I really like the colour. You actually spent a fair bit of time backwards and forwarding with different colour samples, so you mm. chose the final colour. That was worth it. it turned out really well. Yeah. Good to hear, dude. Oh, when Mark yeah. says it's good, you know it's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really hard to please. <laughs> and how does the interior and everything look? I know it's a bit, it's not finished yet. You have to imagine it's it. Not, yeah, no, actually, we're doing well with the interior. We need to do, you know, the, the coverings, you know, the wallpaperings and the things like that. So, so yeah, the deck gear, pretty much all done. You know, the rails and lifelines and um, solar panel. And now we've painted the hulls, we started installing the port lights and that in the hulls. Wow, okay. I really need to see some footage because I, I don't think I'll recognize the boat now. I haven't seen an update for forever. Yeah, I can go for a quick walk and show you right now if you want to. I think that'd that actually be great. Walk. Just to get that one reaction of the paint because I really haven't seen it. I saw one photo, but that'd be great. Okay, I can, I can do that. Okay, surprise us, Mark. Oh, we're super keen to see the boat, man. I'm going to turn the camera around. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Okay. Oh my god. Babe, look at it. Holy that looks shit. so good. Yeah. Oh my god. So you can imagine that those, those beams are not painted yet, but they'll be white like that. So I think the white will be really good, actually. Yeah, yep. the white does look really good. So the other side, well, we're, we're tenting up the, the beams on this side now, so yep. we're going to be painting those. Amazing. Wow, man. It's so shiny. Oh, that is the vintage colour we yeah. wanted. I really do like the colour, you know? Like, oh that's my good God. to hear, mate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> wow, that's beautiful. We'll give that a polish as well to get it up, get the surface nicer. Yeah. Oh, I cannot believe yeah. it. Thank you so much, Exo Nobel, too. So, well, I'm finding the paint is really hard. The surface is really hard. You can't sort of dig your fingernail into it and it doesn't indent. But I think the paint itself is, is a really good quality hard paint. Excellent. Nice one. Oh, oh. sick. So the galley is, the, is that walnut. Yeah. So we've got some walnut timber as a trim. Wow. That looks so nice. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh that's so great, cool. man. No, that, that's really cool. One really cool thing about working with Axo Nobel was the company's ability to create a unique paint colour just for us. Achieving this exact tone of vintage mustard yellow certainly took some work to pull off behind the scenes for everyone involved. But Axo Nobel have just nailed it. First thing that everyone wants to know is the price of the boat. To build this new, it might be about $4 million. This one here has recently had a price drop and it is now 1.95 million US dollars. The weight of this vessel is 12.5 ton. At 55 feet long, 12.5 ton is a very, very good number. It's gonna be more than that because we've got air conditioning and a apartment size fridge on board and a few other things like that but yeah the light ship weight is 12.5 tonne which is good you know for a 55 foot boat because it's all carbon. Another metric with which to measure a multi-hull will be the ease of operation. I 
could hazard a guess that it can be single-handed, but at this point I haven't sailed it, so I couldn't rightfully tell you. So there'll be more on that in next week's episode. Vandal is a 55-foot gunboat. It's 25 feet wide and it has an air draft, so the top of the mast is at 86 feet. There are 720 amps of master volt lithium battery bank, which is at 24 volt. 2,700 watts of Solby and solar panels, and it has a 10 kilowatt Phasor gen set. It's got big alternators on the engine, so there's 140 amp alternators on both engines, they're Yanmars. 39 horsepower, 3, 3JH, uh, 39 horsepower, 3, 39 horsepower, 3HJ5E diesels that run Sea Torque shaft systems. <laughs> One very unique thing about this boat was the entire thing was infused in one piece. So it's all carbon. Because of that, and probably a few other little engineering tricks that I don't know about, the Longeron here just pumps out the front looking incredibly phallic. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I'm really drawn to the bows of the boats. Obviously it's like super important, but yeah, I think from a, a profile perspective, it just looks really sleek and beautiful and not having that cross beam there is it's just sexy. So I've been on gunboats before, and this area I found confusing at the time, but I now know what some of these things mean. I really would encourage people who aren't good at sailing and don't know what these mean. You should get a boat that sails rather than a massive thing that doesn't, and your life will just be much easier longer. Or you'd rather learn this over your two, three, four, five years on board whilst you're doing your circumnavigation and learn and become a good sailor than not even have that option. Big carbon hull spars mast here and we've got three head sails up here so you can change gears quickly. I absolutely love that. There's a couple in the bag here as well. We've got a Solent, we've got a J0, we've got a masthead spinnaker and a fractional reacher. I absolutely love the teak deck. I know it's a bit more work to keep it like good you have to set it down and there's a bit of maintenance there the owners conrad and megan had these made these are not standard on gunboats but obviously for the kids it's nice to have a board or two here to stop them falling off the back of the boat and it's a nice size swim deck too so i'm sure there's an outdoor shower on that side <laughs> this is the first place that i came to we've got an inside helm which is completely different to what i'm used to um, unsure how I feel about that at the moment, but I mean, there is legitimately 365 degree views here. Is it, is it 365? 360. 365 I've got my, doesn't I've exist. got my number of days in it's the year mixed feels. up with my degrees. It's how it feels though. They've squeezed an extra couple of degrees <laughs> in here. That's how, that's how panoramic our view is. So it looks like we can operate most of our stuff here. They've got some hydraulics and some anchor winches. Again, Elena and I are just here by ourselves. So like, it looks pimp. Like this is an incredible spot to do some helming from, you know? This here is a really nice touch, look at that. Vandal. Talk about custom built. I guess that's the thing about buying a boat like this second hand. You can really pick up a very well made boat with lots of detail and thought that's gone into it for a really nice price. We have a sail area versus displacement of 35 and an extrapolated Mokra number of 1.2. Fujin was 1.5, Rapido is 1.49 until I put foils on it and then it'll be more. This is 1.2 and we're being quite conservative just because we are. Right man. Vibe vibe? Check. Well, you guys know what we're gonna say here. It is really cool. I love the teak flooring. No, so I don't think that it's cool. I think it's uh, refined and comfortable. I mean, it is cool, but that's not exactly how I would describe it. Sexy. <laughs> sexy. There's definite elements of sex on board, there's no Super doubt about sexy. it. sexy. <laughs> I think that one of the main things that I would sum up this boat is this area here. So it's, mm. it's very indoor and outdoor. Welcoming. I'm going to say huge instead of massive. This area here is gigantic. I'm going on a, just a huge walk here, so I'll see you all a bit later. <laughs> one, two, Oh, we didn't measure three, the boat yet. Four. 
if this was my boat, I'd have lots of movie nights. This would be the place where a lot of people would hang out, all your cruisers in your anchorage. Oh, you'd have 25 people over here for cocktails and finger food. Party friendly boat. Kid friendly boat as well. Well, so those bows, the kids could just go straight over the front. So it's not like super kid friendly, but it's... Kiddish friendly. Yeah. So I checked. Let's give it a number. You gave Fujin a 10, didn't you? I'm giving it a 10. That's a lot. Yeah. But I don't want to compare boats, really. Oh, so yeah. I'm going to give it like six up. bananas. <laughs> I'm going to give it eight guinea pigs. <laughs> You need to balance the weight out. You need to move further forward. Can you do that? Babe, honestly, he doesn't seem very tired. What are you doing here, mate? I was just going to run a bow and stern back to ourselves. So we can all yeah. get on board and then let the line free. So we don't leave anyone on the dock. Because I want to be a cowboy, baby, baby. And now we're ready to see how she performs with a few days of sailing and living aboard this vessel. We're off to Annapolis. Leaving the dock was easy despite her size. I'm sure I'm going to miss having twin engines. Anyway, there was a palpable buzz of excitement on board as we headed out of the channel and into the big open bay with a perfect weather forecast. Super shallow, we can see more beach than we have here at any other time. I've run aground there, Nils has run aground there, and I've heard around town that it's pretty notorious, this particular corner, so Chris has done pretty well there. How's your food? Pretty good. Sitting on a mildly wet giant fender, we've just pulled up. Um, this is so big, one might even call it a Yokohama. Or drama. massive? Yeah. Mm. Crack that joke <laughs> and He's make banned. an omelet. He's banned from that word. On board with us, we've got Kevin, Nils, and Tiffany, who have all been on this boat before. Crazy. Yeah. And Chris, Chris, who's the captain? <laughs> Chris is the skipper. Chris yeah. is actually the captain of the boat. Again, but they're all friends. We got super lucky with the crew. Um, Niels is just laughing, saying, We got the band back together <laughs> for this boat. So, yeah, we're looking forward to this trip. The boat is for sale, guys. Um, please do check out the link in the description box below if you're interested in buying her. Go through us, that'll be helpful. <laughs> now, nah, because we'd like to do more of this. Um, it's a win for everyone involved, so it's, it's pretty fantastic. If you'd like to get your hands on this vessel, recommend it. But we've just cast off the lines you guys and we're setting sail. We're actually going 100 nautical miles to Annapolis. So yeah, please join us for the next episode. Where we're going to hoist the main and go for a flat. See you all next week. Bye bye. <laughs> The sale on board Vandal has just dropped over on Patreon for those legends who support us on the platform. Thank you. Otherwise, we'll see you guys soon. Please drop us a comment below because we'd love to hear from you.